Hello, 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 Healthy and Whole Marriages family. Hello. We are Seth and Damia Roth, the faces behind Healthy and Whole Marriage Conferences Incorporated. Hello, guys. And we are here for our final Healthy and Whole Marriage session, our final marriage motivational session of the year, 2022, as we start to rev up to keep things going and stay encouraged for the new year. We thought this was the most beneficial, appropriate, enlightening, and encouraging session that we could provide of this year. So before we go further into what this particular session is about, we will proceed the way we do everything else, and that's with prayer. God, we thank you tonight for this opportunity to come before your presence. God, we open our hearts to you. Oh God, we welcome you into the room, asking that you will have your way in and through us tonight. We thank you for this platform. We thank you for the opportunity to even speak to your people tonight. We ask that you will bless and that the words that will be spoken tonight will be applied in the way that they should. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God, amen. Amen. Okay, y'all, I am so excited about this session, but before we get started with that, is if this is your first time here, as I mentioned, we're Seth and Damia Roth, the faces behind Healthy and Whole Marriages, Marriage Conferences Incorporated. That just shows you I'm excited about our presenter on this evening. But what we are about is a Christian-based organization focused on encouraging married couples to have healthy and whole marriages, thereby creating healthy and whole families and cultivating healthy and whole communities. We want your marriage to win, and we know that God does too, because that's what he created, and he designed our marriages to win. We provide monthly motivational sessions, which is what you're here for this evening. And we provide other means of encouragement through our different platforms on Facebook and Instagram, but also an annual Healthy and Whole Marriage Conference at the end of June. So stay tuned, visit us on healthyandwholemarriages.com where you will be abreast, subscribe so that you can stay abreast of all the great things that we have to offer. Like our presenter on this evening, I'm really excited. God put her on my heart a long time ago. Um, and I just knew this had to be him because we met by happenstance. And the way that we met, it was through reading an encouraging book. We were actually a part of a book club and it just so happened that everything you can look back and see that God's hand was on it. So I'm privileged to have met Ariane Hayes. I'm privileged to even have her with us at this time. And God, guys, y'all are going to be so blessed and encouraged from her time with us. Before I get too excited, let me read to you her bio so that you all will know why I'm excited. And then you can just hear more about what she has to offer. She's a multifaceted woman of God who believes in the power of prayer to transform and empower kingdom citizens. Her community mainly consists of women. However, men are touched by her ministry as well. While Ariane has been ordained as both pastor and prophetess, she fully depends on and yields to the Holy Spirit while teaching, preaching, and ministering. Her aim is to bring a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit and be obedient to what he desires to do in each atmosphere he sends her to. She is the founder of Circle of Sisters. Y'all join it, Facebook group. Make sure you get into it. A woman's ministry through her church where she calls pastors. She's also a missionary, excuse me, that travels nationally and internationally to pray, preach, and support the work of the local church. She's been to Pakistan, West Africa, which y'all will hear about more, and hope to be released to go to South Africa this year, along with nationwide women's events in states, such as her hometown, St. Louis, Missouri. Um, Ariane is a healthcare professor by trade and has stood beside her late husband, Bishop Gaston, I don't want to mispronounce his name. Quadjo. Quadjo, that's what I thought. As a co-pastor at House of Prayer for All Nations from 2013 until he was promoted to heaven in 2021. She's a mother of four, a sister, a daughter, and a mentor to many. Her latest accomplishment is being Gigi to Amaya Jade, born in February of this year, and she brings her so much joy. She currently serves as emboldened media group or a part of the emboldened media group and trusted women ministries and godly perspectives. She loves to read, write, and edit in her free time. 
And tonight she is extending some of that free time to share with us her testimony. I present to you guys a blessing and that is Ariane Hayes. Hello, thank you and welcome girl. Hello, thank you so much for having me. It is such an honor and a privilege that um, God chooses to use this, you know, broken pieces. That's what I'll say. So thank you so much for the invitation. I appreciate it. I don't take it lightly. And um, I just thank you for having a, such a peaceful atmosphere, but also for building, help to build marriages. I think God is well pleased with this ministry. So thank you. I lost your volume. Can you Thank you. I truly appreciate that. Didn't even know I was off the volume part. So um, let's just go ahead and get straight into what you have to share with us on this evening. But before like getting into the crux and the meat, if you will, of your particular testimony, can you give us a little bit more of your background story and tell us how you met your husband? Wonderful. That is such a great um, question. And I just like to also welcome everyone who's on the platform tonight. I see someone joining in and also everyone who will watch the replay. I just want to welcome you uh, from Seattle. I always send my love from Seattle, Washington. So uh, I wanted to start with that. So um, my journey of becoming a wife, it really entailed a season of um, me committing myself to Christ completely, surrendering to the plan that the Lord had for my life. Um, what I didn't know is when I yielded and I said, God, I want to take my hands off of everything in my life and let you be the builder of my life. In that surrender, I never knew that I was going to meet someone on a missions trip. That was part of God's plan. But because I said, surrendered myself, in an atmosphere of really praying and serving my church. And I mean, really serving my church. I was a single mom and I had committed myself to celibacy and I committed myself to my children and I committed myself to my local church. And I started with cleaning. My family and I would go on Saturdays and we would clean the church. And I started with serving in children's ministry because I had young children. And um, soon thereafter, the elders of the church um, asked me to um, go on a mission trip with them. Uh, what they did not know that uh, in my prayer time, the Wednesday before our Saturday prayer meeting, the Lord interrupted my prayer time in one of the uh, only ways that I have heard his audible voice that I can remember. And he told me very simply, you will go to Africa this year and you will find love. And I was like, okay, the Lord just told me that. But what I didn't know is that the following Saturday that the um, elders of the church would, would verify and confirm that I was going on the missions group with them uh, to Africa that summer. So um, with that, of course, the preparation really was for the ministry. I, I took, you know, in the back of my, in the back of my brain, what God had said, and I know that God speaks to me. However, I understand that sometimes it could be in a parable that sometimes it could be, you know, he says something and it comes to pass years later. So, um, I was excited about what he had said, but the forefront of the, um, the assignment was to go to minister to West Africa. So, I went to minister in, uh, to West Africa the very first time that I preached the gospel. It was in 2007. I'll never forget it. And um, at the end of that ministry trip on the vacation day, that is where I, um, I would say, met Pastor Gaston. I, I had seen him. He was part of our team. He was a pastor in those churches over in West Africa. But that was the time that the elders of the church orchestrated a meeting between he and I. Y'all, I'm smiling because I heard this part of the story. It is like the cutest, most, like, you know how you see a Hallmark movie and then it's in <laughs> real life. It's kind of like one of those things. I was just blown away. So listen, for a moment, if it's okay with you, I want you to kind of just flow with that because again, I think it's such a beautiful story to know that God just, okay, you're going to West Africa and you're like, okay. And 
you're going to find love. And you're like, huh? I'm going to West <laughs> Africa. And then, yeah, can you just go on after meeting and how you guys ended up connecting? Yeah, definitely. I want to add a little bit of detail because sometimes what man has planned for you you know, it's certainly different from what God has planned for you because my brother-in-law is actually a native from Ivory Coast. That's where we went. Um, it's either Cote d'Ivoire in French or Ivory Coast in um, English. And my brother-in-law was trying to hook me up with one of his friends. So for when um, I agreed to go on this missionary trip, my brother-in-law had said, hey, I have a friend. He saw your picture. I want you guys to start communicating. And um, he didn't speak uh, English. So my brother-in-law would have to interpret and we built this friendship. But for me, it was just about literally a friendship. So as soon as I went over um, and I got off the plane, I was the only woman on the missions trip. And this um, friend of my brother, I'll just call him my brother. He met me at the, at the airport. And as soon as I got off the plane, he started to hold my hand and I was very guarded. Like I was very guarded. I'm an introvert by nature. And I was, I was just thinking, I thought we were just friends. And so I was very guarded. And so I remember it was um, in the conference, there was one particular night that the pastor called me forward. And he said to me, um, and he said, your marriage project, there has been a mountain in front of you, but in the name of Jesus, that mountain is breaking right now. And as he said that, as they translated that from French to English, I felt something on the inside of me actually break. And so I don't know what the plan was at that time that God had. And then a few uh, days later, the pastors orchestrated this meeting of me and my, I didn't know my, my future husband at the time. And everything was done in such decency and order because unbeknownst to me, they had talked about this meeting without my knowledge. They really supported him, I guess, in his attraction to me. And um, they supported him. We met. It was almost an interview style um, as he, you know, asked me many questions about, you know, what was what did my future look like for my marriage project. That's really a, a term, marriage project. Um, what if the Lord wanted me to marry a man of God rather than a businessman, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I still wasn't in the know about what this interview was about because as a missionary, you're interviewed everywhere, the radio station, the news station, you go to different churches. And at the end of our meeting, he said, well, um, I'm not married and you're not married. So will you agree to pray for me and I'll pray for you over the next few months? And I said, sure. And so um, he asked for a picture of me. And once he asked for a picture of me, he didn't know that I knew this about their culture, is that um, when a man is seeking approval from God on to court a woman, they ask for a picture. They put the picture in their Bible. Every time they pray about their marriage, they, um, you know, pray over the picture, et cetera, et cetera. So when he asked me that, I was immediately taken aback, but I, I did give him a picture. And then um, that was the beginning of our uh, friendship. And it lasted, um, a long distance relationship lasted for about four years. We were we were just friends for about four years long distance. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, wow. y'all should have put your picture in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> listen, so listen, y'all, wow. four years. Now we did the long distance thing. It was like yeah. back and forth. It was, it was Yeah. Place. She said West <laughs> Africa, y'all. And as you mentioned, this was 20, 2007. So we weren't as big into Facebook and Instagram and all of that stuff at the time. So how how would you all communicate? We have to be very intentional because number one, the time difference is about mm -hmm. seven or eight hours, depending upon daylight savings. Um, we were not uh, with the social media. So it was a lot of buying calling cards on my in call credits on his end. Um, we emailed each other almost every day. He would have to go to an internet cafe and pay for time on the internet. And um, immediately once I knew that um, 
God was in the midst of it. As a single mom, I also wanted him to build a relationship with my children once I said yes to the engagement, because I felt that that was really, really important. After my pastor's um, guided us through whether or not this was something that we felt was a God um, relationship. And uh, we got the permission to continue to establish the relationship. It was important for me, for my children to start to build relationship with him. So not only was he emailing me, he would email the children. And there was um, one hour a week, I think we would talk on the telephone. And so um, it was really intentional and um, we had journals. I would visit um, missions every year. I continued my missions. And so um, I would, um, we would exchange journals. So maybe if when we couldn't talk with each other, maybe we'd journal some thoughts. And then once a year when we would see each other, we just exchange the journals and then continue the conversation and swap them every time we, we would get and together. So. And was that for four years? You all yeah. the, the journals waffle. Yes, the journals was for four years. Um, um, old school, I guess, photo albums is what we would call yeah. it. Um, I would take uh, photo albums to him as well because, you know, we go on these missions trips every year. And although he was a part of it, he was not always with our team. So just to capture um, what the Americans would capture from, from the land of Ivory Coast, we would make a book and send that to him and the church as well. So, wow. Uh, oh, yeah. This story is so much better than when you first told it to me. I'm feeling, <laughs> yeah, I told you I might cry. So this is beautiful. Um, so let's kind of delve a little bit more or deeper. When did you guys officially get married and tell us a little bit about that process and then we can go further. Yes. So the process of our marriage was a little bit turbulent because we really were hoping for a fiance visa so that my family could take part in um, the festivities of, of course, me being married. And um, it was important to him um, to be here in America because he felt that the um, his family was a little bit displaced. And I'll say that because he decided instead of to go to university to serve God. And so his father for some years really said, well, if that's the choice that you're making, we, we need to cut you off. So he's always recognized his family as the church. And so it wasn't really important for maybe all of his family to attend his wedding, but um, so we tried to get him to America on the fiance visa. And then in 2010, I do believe his country had a civil war. And so in, in that war, they were really targeting pastors and Christians. And so um, his, the churches, the churches we were affiliated with there had to flee to Ghana, the next country over. And so um, once the civil war was over, we decided that we would do a destination wedding, that I would come there. So an elder of my church escorted me across the seas, <laughs> carrying my dress, that great elder, he <laughs> carried my dress to every airport, made sure that my dress would properly arrive to Africa. And we had um, our wedding there um, in Africa. I will tell you that was the longest day and the longest wedding I've ever attended. It was about eight hours long. I'm sure uh, you uh, were beautiful. Uh, yeah. Eight hours. <laughs> yeah. It was about eight hours long. Wow. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You would have loved it. You, he yeah. likes the spotlight. So he would have been eight fine. Yes, you would have been just fine. Oh, okay. um, so listen. Um <laughs> I guess before that, before, before getting, not before that, yeah. my next question would be, since he was displaced and, or part of his family was displaced and there was not a big deal for him to come to the States, yes. did you all end up living here together in the States as a married couple? Yes. Yeah, so um, God is so good and his time is perfect because if you study the visa process, it's a long one. It's generally probably 12 to 16 months. And so um, once we were married, um, we we were married. I visited, I think, once th during the year um, during our marriage and um, we applied for the visa and the Lord literally sent him here four days before our one year anniversary. 
miraculously. It just happened to happen just very quickly with a snap of a finger. Um, and it didn't appear that it was going to go that way because the offices in Africa, the government offices in Africa are very, very slow in processing things. Even though the United States may process things quickly, things may get held up just in the offices with processing. And at the last minute, um, it was so divine that my mother actually called me one day and said, I got this airline credit and I really am just feeling led to support you and your fiance whenever it's time for him to come to give that airline credit to him to come. And she, she was led to do that. And literally a week later, he got his visa and we were able to get him on the plane the same day he received his visa. So we were married in 2011 in December and he came December 2012, just four days before our one year anniversary. Okay. So that whole first year, you guys were not together. You were still no. long distance. Couple. Still long distance. Yes. My glory. And technology had a van. So we were Skyping by that time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. So during... You said that, and actually I read in your bio that God called him in 2021. So 2011, you guys were probably married about 10 years or had you? Yes, we were going to celebrate our 10 year anniversary, December, 2021. And um, God is so amazing because um, in 2020, um, we were about to celebrate our wedding anniversary. And I remember my husband was like, our 10 year anniversary, we're just going to do it big. And he's like, we're going to get new rings and we're going to just have this grand celebration. Even he wanted to go back to Africa to have the celebration. And um, a few weeks before our wedding anniversary that year, he we would do date night every Sunday, uh, every Sunday evening. Um, and... Um, he said, I am, he's like, let's go to the mall. And I said, you know, I don't like going to the mall. I'm probably the only woman that does not enjoy going to the mall. I don't enjoy shopping per se. So um, he said, I'm really feeling that we need to exchange our rings. He said, I was thinking our 10 year anniversary, but I'm really feeling that we need to do it now. And so we did exchange rings, the um, our ninth year anniversary uh, and did not wait for the 10th year anniversary. So. Yeah. Now, if it's okay with you, can you tell us how that, how he Transition. transitioned? And and <laughs> I think you called, I was trying to rem remember the term you used, promoted or promoted. graduated <laughs> to heaven. How, how did that take place? Yes. So um, the Lord moved us. Um, we're in the Seattle area now. Um, and we lived in a town called Bellingham, which is about 30 minutes from the Canadian border. And I lived there for 20 years. And my husband lived there his most of the time he was in the States. And we went to a conference in 20, I guess, 2019. And the Lord just spoke simply to me and said, in zero to six months, everything will be new. And we prayed into that and we fasted into that. And fast forward to the date, six months later, we bought a new home in the Seattle area, a second home in a pandemic only God can do, only God can do. And so when we moved here, um, the church, we really didn't know how God was moving us in ministry because in Bellingham, most of the churches shut their doors, you know, go online. It's COVID, right? Uh, my husband has started to open the church up to a few selective, like you sign up, you come at this time. But when the Lord moved us, um, we just said, well, I don't think we can really take for granted and assume that we know how God want us to move in the Seattle area. So ultimately he wanted to take a time of prayer and fasting and in his culture and what he was accustomed to that prayer and fasting can be two months. It, it literally shut in praying and fasting. And um, he really didn't want to leave a burden in the household. And so he asked me to search nationwide to see if there were any prayer camps, any facilities that would accommodate pastors where they could pray. 
And I did a search and the most that I could find was like two weeks, you know, we can accommodate you for two weeks. Or of course you can come to our property and set up a tent. And I said, uh, this African man does not know how to pitch a tent <laughs> and he probably wouldn't feel comfortable living in a tent for two months. And so we decided that he could go back to his home country. There wouldn't be um, a deficit of finances because I said, well, you could go to a hotel. And he says, no, I'm going to step away from working for a few months so I can hear from God. I also don't want to burden the finances with also me being in a hotel for two months. It's just not sustainable. So he decided to go back to his home country and to lock himself and to pray. And so unfortunately, um, when uh, his his uh, pastor friends found out he was in the area, of course, the invitations start to come to come to my church and preach here, come to my church on this all night prayer night. And he started to, to go outside and to minister. And um, about two months into it, he was almost on his way home. He um, contracted COVID. And unfortunately, the hospital systems in that nation, coupled with um, him maybe thinking he had malaria instead of COVID, it was just uh, really hard on his system. And he was sick for about three weeks and never did recover. And he passed away very suddenly, very, very suddenly um, and unexpected, unexpectedly. Didn't know if he wanted to say anything. You've, of course, had my condolences and prayers. Yeah. I'll stop and see if you want to. I guess when when I think about you all, literally, we're about to celebrate. December is on the horizon of the first year. Yeah. And second year. Second year. Okay. And it's just amazing how you sit here with such grace and you're able to tell this story with such conviction. I am elated uh, just to hear more about the journey of how you what you've done to to stay so encouraged because sometimes when you see it doesn't matter any spouse that have lost their spouse they are devastated talk to me a little bit about that how you've been able to just sustain yourself i can see just the grace of God all over you. And that part of it to me is just wonderful. Mm. Is it that you shut yourself in prayer or how, how did that proceed? You know, you said it, it's the grace of God. That is the only explanation that I have for this season that my family and I are still in. And it was very evident from the first few days, I just kept saying grace is real. Grace is real because his grace enveloped us in a way that is unexplainable. I have no words. I would have thought from the outside looking in that I would be out of my mind. I thought that um, the hardest thing I've ever had to do in this world so far um, has been to tell my seven-year-old that her dad, at the time six years old, um, that her dad went to heaven. And I didn't know how to do it, but the spirit of God just told me um, all the words to say to her. And even the night as I held her and she cried, I thought like, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to take her to a hospital and my, my teenagers and my, my adult son, but the grace showed up so heavy. The presence of the Lord was so heavy, even in the times, um, that I couldn't pray. It's unexplainable. I couldn't open my mouth and pray. And I called my pastor and I said, you're going to have to teach me how to pray again. I cannot pray. Um, but the Lord in his sovereignty also assigned people to me in this season, um, people to pray, just like your wife said that she heard my story and she was praying for me. The Lord had sent and assigned people all over the world for the days that I could not literally get out of bed. There was a, my phone would ring and it, it would be just on time someone to pray me out of the bed, literally. And so I started to recognize God's grace 
And I've just been so attracted to his grace and his peace and the um, supplication he has given us in this season that I've taken it as this is just one of the things in my life that I have to bear. Everyone has their thing, you know, everyone has their, you know, thorn <laughs> that's in their flesh. Um, and this is our thing. And so what I've tried to do is just to stay under that umbrella of grace and stay under that umbrella of his peace. And when I can't do anything myself, I just rest in him. Okay. And that has been our journey for almost the last two years. Wow. Thank you uh, mm -hmm. so much for sharing. Oh, I'm fine. I, I mean, he asked the question I was going to ask anyway, as I stated to you earlier, um, there have been questions already that had come in. People were posing for you to answer and just insight and encouragement. So I can go down that list of questions as well in just a few. But I do want you guys to know that if there's a question on your heart, your mind, uh, Ariane is open to um, listening to those questions and you can drop those in the chat box and we will get those answered for you. And if not, we will find a way to get the answer for you. So just know that that is available to you to use at any point in time during this particular session. So if I may ask one of the first questions or other first questions, I guess, having experienced this and just how beautifully you just described staying under the umbrella of grace yes. and peace and what would you... And remembering some of the story that you shared with me, um, let's talk a little bit about that. Is there anything that you wish you would have done differently? I remember you kind of sharing with me about the clothes, if you mm -hmm. don't mind sharing the laundry story. Yes. Hindsight is always um, twenty twenty, And the Lord really um, aligned our last, month together to be very beautiful. We took a family vacation that he wasn't supposed to be on in the last minute he came through that allowed um, him to drive us home from a road trip from California to Seattle. Um, but in that trip, trip, I was working a lot and it was one of the first times that he was completely just dedicated to the family. No one was calling him for prayer. No one was calling him to preach. He was just very, very present. And now I look back and I said, but I wasn't present in that moment. Like he spent a lot of time with the children and I was working and um, doing all the things that I was normally doing, overextending myself. And really um, that's one of the things when I look back, I, I say that, and I, and I make room now for, to really have my family time protected, to really protect it and to really encourage that we all protect it together. You know, the teenagers like, okay, get off of the phones or, you know, stop checking the emails from, you know, the adults or let's just be present with each other, enjoying, enjoying each other. Cause sometimes I think as families in the, in this day and age, it's really easy to take that time and space for granted. So those, that's one of the things. And, um, secondly, um, the small things don't even matter. You know, the small things don't even matter. I remember, um, you're referencing the laundry and that was a hard day. So I can't even remember what the argument was about, but I remember that I was upset with my uh, husband for something and I started his laundry and I brought it back from the dryer and I just made up my mind. I'm not going to fold this laundry. I'm just going to put it in his closet and he'll just have to deal with it, you know? And, um, as he left that laundry never got folded. And so as I was going into his closet and dealing with the reality that, um, or the shock of, you know, I'm never going to see him again. And I sat there uh, very tearfully and I folded that laundry and creased it and did the most excellent job of folding it. Um, but it was too late. 
It was too late. So sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That was a that was a heavy day. That was a very heavy day. So um really um understanding that um the small stuff really doesn't matter and that marriage is all about us um coming into agreement and coming into agreement for the vision and and that's a whole nother revelation that the lord has given me most recently but really um when you look at the bible you will see that even the widow the lord used a widow to help the prophet. The Lord used the widow to provide. The Bible says provision. And when you break down that word provision, you look at the vision already being there. And that is the role of the man in the garden. When God created the man, he gave him his vision, his, his job description, everything was settled. And then the woman came to be the helper. And that's where the pro comes in because pro means before pro. So, so the woman is there to go before the vision and to make sure that the vision is helped, that the vision is met with all the needs. The woman um, is skilled and gifted and created to add to that vision. And that power of agreement is so important. And the agreement really needs to always be for the vision. And if the agreement in the marriage is always for the vision, then that yielding and that flexibility that needs to happen, that dance that you learn how to do in marriage, I think that is really pleasing to God because we have a God who cares about in unity. And so I think I better stop right there. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. You know, and so um, I was really blessed to be able to um, assist my husband. I want to say this, when the Lord talks about um, the the woman, um, the, the, Lord, the Bible speaks of a comparable helper. That's really important, that comparable helper, because although I never thought that I would be a minister, I never thought that I would be a pastor, I never thought that I would be, you know, doing deliverance ministry, all of the things, the Lord sent my husband a comparable helper. So although I didn't think that that was my vision, but the Lord made sure that I had everything that I needed on the inside of me to stand beside him and be a comparable helper. And so I just take the light of the years that um, we were together. I learned so much from him, but he always pointed me to the God that was inside of me. So. Okay. So I know this may not really fit you guys. Um, I apologize. I'm Don't. just going to throw this in the middle. I know this may not fit. Ariane, we may be calling on you again because right now I'm getting really full and I know you're going to bless us. We just, I just want you to be on guard. We may be reaching out to you again in the future because you have blessed me immensely already just from that last five, 10 minutes. Um, as you see, I can't stop crying and I didn't even bring tissue I warned you about. Mm -hmm. But um, okay, so if I can catch my breath and we've talked about at the, the turn of this year, at the conference, at the beginning of the year, excuse me, even at the last conference, I think we spoke about vision, yep. spoke about vision. And that's something that people are not fully getting as a part of marriage. You know, we do the vision boards and we are doing vision boards for our careers. We're doing vision boards for the things that we want out of life that we deem successful, those material things. And we're missing that there's a vision attached to our lives and our lives as a married couple. So, oh my gosh. Okay try to stay on track and I'm going to try to keep breathing in the midst of this. I, I thank you so much for that so far. Um, you, would you categorize the laundry day that was tough for you as something that you would have done differently? And is there something counter to that, that you wish you would have maybe known or actually told him? I think what I would have done differently is not let the pettiness, if I can use that word, <laughs> not let the pettiness overtake the way that I showed up to serve him because that was petty, not to finish his laundry, right? And and not not getting into a role thing because my husband did laundry as well, but it was it was a statement that I was trying to make a, a pettiness, and I can't even remember what 
I was upset about. So I think that in hindsight, I would, um, I would have um, tried to be unconditional in the way that I served or showed up as a partner whether it's the way that I'm doing the laundry or the way that we're showing up to, to minister or the way that we're showing up to discipline our children. Um, because even though that was a very small task, it's like, I just left it up to him. I just left him hanging. If, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. And we actually, uh, two conferences ago had pastor Jonathan Pitts, yeah. speak with us on emptied out Being is empty. a book he wrote with his late wife winter pits mm -hmm. and that was right before it was being published mm -hmm. actually just days before her death i don't know if you're familiar with him but they they were getting back the information about it being published and it was their 15th year wedding anniversary yep. and he thought she went to lie down and that was it yep. in the all in the same day um and so just, just what you're giving us now in making sure that you're unconditional or unconditionally giving and unconditionally serving in your capacity as a spouse, period, it mirrors that. And I appreciate that as well. Okay. Is there something that, let me make sure I'm getting all these questions correct and not throwing myself in here. What advice would you tell families not living in the moment? And I think you kind of started alluding mm -hmm. to this by saying, yes. no petty, try to minimize that. Be present. I mean, yeah, be present. I would add, I would add, be intentional. Mm -hmm. When you have children that are varying ages, my youngest is seven, my oldest that lives in the home is 20. Okay. We have to be very intentional when we craft out our family time to make sure that everyone is being attended to. Everyone is feel if if we're doing something that's recreational, everybody is feeling like their recreational needs are being met. If we're doing something um, that's educational, that's uh, that it's on every wavelength. And I would also say, make no apologies if you have um, children to date them individually and then have family date nights. So date your children individually because they need your one-to-one -one time. As your spouse, I should, <laughs> I'm hoping that we're dating as as, as married couples. Um, your spouse definitely needs um, date time away from all of the things, not just the kids, not just the house, but of course the business. If you guys are in business together, um, if you work together, if you create together, the date night should just be pouring into each other. And I also think being intentional with your children to let them know as they grow that they're still the apple of your eye as well. Because it's really easy to have fun with a seven-year-old or a five-year-old or a four-year-old. And then it gets kind of quirky when they're like 16 years old and 18 years old. And it's like, okay, how can I get on their level? How can I bring them into something that I think they would enjoy? Um, an example of that is that we went to go see an African gospel choir last weekend. And my older children did not want to go, but I said, you know what? You guys are going to be somebody's spouses one day. I want you to be able to dress up nice, go to the theater. And I knew my younger daughter would enjoy it because she's in a choir. And after the event, the kids, all, everyone said that was great. So just being very intentional on creating experiences for the children. Or your family, excuse me. Yeah. So with regards to that and you bringing up the date nights that you guys share every Sunday night, how easy was that for you all to do the date nights and, as you said, be intentional about pouring into each other as co-pastors? You know, how do you, were you able to separate those things and, you know, make the best of the time that you had together from starting off long distance and then he was getting ready to leave again? So can you share a little more about that? Yes. Um, it wasn't easy at first because my husband also traveled a lot. He would still travel back to different mission trips. But um, we carved out Sunday and um, 
Saturday or Sunday. I can't remember. I think it was Sunday. And sometimes it wasn't always easy because we were also ministers. So Sunday is like the busiest day. So sometimes you just want to come home and take a nap and be done. But um, we, we tried to make it simple. Let's go for a drive. It doesn't always need to cost money. And I think also I'm introverted. And so it took a while for my husband to realize that I recharge alone. So what that means is sometimes I take weekends away um, from the family. And once I think we set, we were really settled in that um, everyone just really came on board on what that looks like because if we had a younger child that means for us to go on a date most of the time the older children would have to agree to watch their little sister so everybody just creating this partnership where we could have our you know alone time sometimes it was just going somewhere for dessert sometimes it was just going down to the space needle and walking around so we really try to make it simple but consistent and also we would try to go away as a couple once a quarter once a quarter, like on an overnight, you know, um, stay, whether it was local or my husband really loved Arizona. So things like that to just be consistent with it. Um, and don't really make it about money, money or grandiose things. Love it. Thank you. I'm trying to reconfigure. Okay. One of the last few questions, because I know you're, you're on a different time zone. You have to tend to your children again. So the last few questions, you said that unfortunately he succumbed to the COVID while away back in West Africa. During that time, it had already been two months. Did you get a chance to speak to him at all prior to? Yes, that's the thing. We spoke every day. He spoke to our daughter every day. Um, he would video chat with her for hours at a time while I was working. And um, when he got sick, he stopped video chatting because he was in the hospital with her, but would still try to talk on the phone. And so we were in communication every single day. And that's why I said it was so unexpected because he was actually supposed to be uh, released the next day. And we knew he was going to need oxygen. And I asked him, would you like for me to come there, travel with you? Uh, would you like your brother to come there? And he said, he told me, no, stay with the kids. And so um, literally, I know COVID is a moving target, but he literally got an infection Saturday night. And by Monday, he was gone. He had passed. And so we were in communication. If I could read you the text message, I should have pulled it. Um, the very last thing he said to me was thank you. He was always thanking me. So please be grateful to your spouses. He did such a good job. Every night I cook dinner. Thank you for cooking dinner. Every week I went grocery shopping. Thank you for going grocery shopping. And I would just be like, that's so weird. Like it, it was very consistent. Like it was just part of him. Like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And he, he didn't know he was passing, but um, on the last day, the spirit of God took over me and had me to go a different direction with him. And I didn't know he was passing, but just to encourage him, oh, this has been a long journey. You're doing so well. You know, the Lord will deliver you from all of your afflictions. Just wait on the Lord. I just started pouring out those messages and he texted me back. And the last text, I think he said, thank you for all of the efforts that you've been making for me because we were trying to move him to a different hospital. And so his last words were, thank you. And so um, that was amazing. That was amazing. And when I look back on it, I was like, wow. I mean, I think we take for granted um, when we have gems of people that are in our lives and we get used to just having them there. And sometimes we don't appreciate them as much. So a lot of my reflection these days is I wish I could have said thank you more like he said it, like that's not necessarily my personality. I kind of hold my emotions in, but I'm a doer. So, um, so learning the love language, I'll, I'll end it with that. Learning the love language of your spouse, of your partner, of your children, of your the people you work with, learning that love language and being able to show up and give them that appreciation, give them their flowers now, I think um, 
that's what I've learned through this journey as well. I think this, wait, I'm sorry. Was there something from you? I have nothing. I feel like Whitney Houston. I have nothing. I have nothing. I have nothing. But I will say you have encouraged me to be more intentional. And I, I think that's the beauty of just hearing your authentic conversation regarding just the simple things. And oftentimes I overlook the simple things. And I think that part of it is so important. You just don't know. So I appreciate you for that. Thank you. With the last thing you said, Ariane, um, I think this these couple questions can go together. And um, I this will probably be our last question unless there's something from someone before we allow her to go back to take care of her beautiful family. Um, wrong choice of words. Allow her to go back to take care of her beautiful family. You know what I meant. But, oh. um, <laughs> but um what what do you wish or is there something you wish someone would have told you or that you would have known about that entire process and being a young widow marriage and you know it all in its entirety i'm still navigating the widow hood of things i think the i think the most challenging part is in the night time, in the evening time, because I think for spouses, that's a time where you connect. Once the kids are put to bed, once the emails are done from your business and couples connect in different ways. Sometimes it's meeting together at the sink to brush your teeth at night, you know, things like that. Sometimes um, me and my husband in the early morning, we both would pray in the early morning. Like he goes to his room, I go to my room and um, he would wave at me in the morning on his way to work or like I'm half sleeping, do the double you know, kiss on the cheek, like I'm going to work. Those types of things I think I miss because again, I think the Lord um, groomed us for a long distance relationship. And so there wasn't a lot of time that I felt disconnected from him, even though he was traveling or even though I was traveling or um, there wasn't a lot of time that I was disconnected from him. I just didn't feel that disconnect. But I think... Um, the evening hours when the house settles down and I feel like, oh, my duty of being mom for the day is done and my duty from being the professor is done from the workplace. And then there's just this space that feels kind of empty. That's the place that's still hard. And because we were not at the funeral, um, sometimes it just feels like he's on this extended you know, missionary trip. <laughs> and so I have to jolt myself kind of back to like, oh no. Um, so, I mean, there's other small things like nobody tells you how long you keep a tube of toothpaste when it's just you, you know, those types of things. But um, I'm still navigating those things. The holidays are coming up. His birthday was in December, our anniversary, wedding anniversary is in December. And then you know, the Christmas time. So naturally, um, that time is a little bit harder, but I don't know. I'm just kind of walking this journey with God. I, I used to say, and I probably will, will continue to say that, that um, nothing is the same, but that's what grace is for. Yeah. Yeah. Things don't, I've never been here before. I've never been to this place before, but um, Grace is, is carrying carrying us along this road. So I'm grateful. And I was not prepared at all for all uh, that you have poured into me. I thought I was. Um, yeah, just me individually, but yeah, us. I, you guys, I'm done because I don't think I can much more other than if you guys have any questions, comments for Ariane before she gets out of here, I I will give you guys a moment. This is her beautiful family. 
That's our family picture from last um, last December without him. My, all of my children, I have an older son out of the home, but um, that's us. And we were able to smile those smiles pretty authentically. And that's only because of God. So please continue to pray for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you mind if you have a picture of him? Um, yes, I, um, let me put that other picture back up. Share screen, it's not. It was our last vacation together. That's why I, I really, um, uh oh, that was not the right one. Let's see, stop share. How do I get to this one? Uh, I think I have to do a new share. Oh no, I have to do that. Can you guys see that one? Yeah. So this is the vacation that he wasn't supposed to be on. And um, he was actually preparing for his trip to Africa because he was going to be for, there for three months. So we had a whole summer of vacations planned. So I said, oh, no, we'll go on this one alone. And this um, little one had a birthday. And I called him the night before and said, wouldn't it be so cool if you flew in to Cali for um, her birthday? And so he flew in and I thought, oh, when do I take you back to the airport? And he goes, oh no, I don't need to go back to work before I go to Africa. I'm going to drive you guys home. And so God orchestrated that. And I wish I had another picture because on that trip to California, we stopped at one of my friend's house and we ended up spending the night there. And we told our love story testimony to the entire youth group and they were just captivated. And I thought, this is so weird. Why do these young people want to know about us? And they were captivated. But little did we know that that would be some of our last few days together. Because when we came back from that trip, he left for Africa three days later. So God knew. God knew. So, Absolutely, yeah. he did. Absolutely beautiful, Ariane. I, I don't see any other questions. But as I stated to you before, um, I had several that came in and I tried to just finagle them in. Um, but I do have requests for this Zoom recording. So just so you guys know, this will be posted. Ariane is comfortable with us posting this and sharing as it is our endeavor to help encourage everyone on their marital journey as we have been encouraged and sharing in different ways that we have been impacted and just hoping that you guys are, you know, feeling the fortitude to yeah. fight on because this this is a marathon and sometimes it can be a difficult one. So we we hope that you guys get a chance to not only view this, but share it as well. And Ariane, we cannot thank you enough thank for you. this time and this opportunity. You did more than I, well, no, because I prayed and I never know what God is going to do. But whenever... Um, Whenever he orchestrates it, uh, you can just expect to be blown away. And this is just what happened. So I appreciate you, not only for your time, because that's a commodity that is very important. We cannot get back. But for allowing him to use you in the manner that he has saw fit. And for encouraging us to be grateful for what we have, to be grateful for our own journeys, and to know that what we have and where we are, it's not always just about us or for someone. I tell um or I've said oftentimes, everything we go through is not necessarily about us. Sometimes it's for someone else and mm -hmm. it's not even about you at all or for you, it's for someone else. And whatever he has used you for or this experience for, for you. And as you said, you're a thorn. I, excuse me, I personally thank you for the grace that it has provided to me and the encouragement. Um, did you have anything more? that you wanted to share. Okay. I am, if there's okay. nothing else, let me make sure I'm not missing one last person. And if there's any um, last thing that you wanted to share, they're just saying, thank you so much, Ariane, for sharing. You're absolutely beautiful. And they will be praying for you and your family. And she said some words. I let, if you don't mind this being your last words and we will pray out. And you guys, if you want to, if you find yourself encouraged as we have by Ariane, check her out on Instagram at AK Inspires. Again, that's AK Inspires. I'll try to type that rather quickly so that you guys will see that. And um, 
You can also get this recording. We'll make sure you're aware of that later as well so that you'll have that information. Oh, she put it up there also so that you can have this information. Visit us on our website at www.healthandhomemarriages.com. And your, what you said to me the other day, which I thought was so beautiful, it was when the music stops. If you don't mind sharing those words before we close out in prayer. I forget how I said it, but um, it was really to just to continue to uplift our family in prayers. Prayers are priceless. And um, what I found in this journey is, you know, when the when the music stops, everyone else returns, you know, back to their lives. And this is our life. We are really continuing to pick up uh, the pieces that the ashes have settled. We continue to present those ashes to God because he's the one that gives us beauty for those ashes. So we're in that mode of exchanging all of this pain and unexpected and see, um, exchanging that um, with God. So he's faithful. So uh, if you remember to pray for us, we would so appreciate it. Absolutely. When the music stops, just keep praying. Thank you, Ariane, once again. And we will go ahead and close out in prayer. Thank you guys for being available, being on this marital journey, not only with us, but for including us as a part of your marital journey as well. Gracious Father, we thank you. God, we thank you for Ariane and what she has poured out for us tonight. God, we pray that she will put back into her, oh God, what she has given to your people. God, that you will strengthen her one more day, oh God, for all that she's done and all that she's doing, oh God, that you will bless the ministry, that you will bless her children. God, we know when the music stops, we sometimes feel like we can't go on, but we thank you for your grace tonight. And God, we lift our hands to you, oh God, saying, be who you are in and through us. And God, bless us for your glory. God, we pray for every couple that is represented here tonight, every couple that will view this recording. God, inspire them to be present. Inspire them to be more for their family, be more for their friends, oh God. Enable them to step beyond what they can see, oh God, and begin to operate in faith, faith in family, faith in love, faith in you. God, we just give you glory and we give you honor and praise for this time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. 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 And until next time, be healthy. Be whole. Be blessed. Blessed is our prayer for each of your, your marriages and for you. Good night, you guys. Thank you so much.